Let's take this glorious gospel that we live from the neighborhood to the nation.
It would cause us to do some things with better understanding when we know that what I give has power. The Lord has blessed New Birth Christian Center to be because of the power of somebody's offering. Be careful that we don't take a spoiled mentality and say because he's been good to us, there is nothing else for us to do because God will come through. Now God always comes through. But he places a mandate on the people of the house to care for the house. Yes. It's our job to care for our house. I taught on, on, on tithing on last week, and, and one of the things that the Lord prompted me uh, was that there were those who were tithing but not tithing the tenth. Understand you can't tithe without tithing the tenth. Tithing meaning tenth. And we understood that when we give God that tent, it activates the windows of heaven. Yes. And he says, I begin to pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to contain. Because the, 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 the system of God's blessing is now being activated and I'm a faithful steward with the tent. God is blessing me to do more with the 90 than I did with the 100. But there is still something that I've got to understand that my giving, my offering, has power. You make it possible for things to happen around you. 
That means if my giving has power to make things happen around here when I don't give. All right now. Come on. See, we can shout about giving and power and things happening. But there is an effect when I don't do. Because if my giving creates power, then my lack of giving does what? Paul is talking here. And he's talking to them about their offering. And he's telling them that God loves a what kind of giver? God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a giver who can release it and be happy about it. Yes. The ninth verse. The sixth verse. Or the seventh, excuse me. Let each one give. As he, I'm, I'm going to say this in the King James, has purpose in his heart. Let him give that way, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want us to give because someone has pulled it out of us. God loves a cheerful giver. How do you become a cheerful giver? When you understand, we call in the scripture, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, it all belongs to God. And because it all belongs to God, he has blessed me with what I have. How many of you are happy about the blessing Amen. that the Lord has given you? That's the first thing we should be happy about is because God has blessed us. The second thing is that God has blessed me to be a blessing. God didn't just bless you to bless you. The Lord didn't bless you so you could go by that nice suit. I'm just telling you. He didn't bless you so you could go buy a brand new car. Those are the effects of the blessing. He blessed you so you could first return to him what belongs to him. And above that, manage as he would have you to. And in that management, he always said, take care of my house and my people. And the effects of the blessing come from good stewardship. Send me out. Send me out.